United States has an extensive system of navigable inland waters. About 25,000 miles in 29 states lie east of the Rockies, where the expansive Mississippi complex reaches from the Plains and Middle West to the Gulf and Texas. The East Coast waterway runs from New Jersey to Miami and the Florida Keys. The Cross Florida Canal is the strategic connection between these two vast systems. This, then, is the case for the canal. When completed, the Cross Florida Barge Canal will connect the Gulf and Atlantic with a protected waterway more than 600 miles shorter than the present route around the Florida Keys. After many years of study and planning, the state and federal agencies involved unanimously agreed upon one route one plan, a toll-free, lock-type, shallow-draft barge canal, higher than sea level. It will run atop the water-bearing strata rather than cutting down through this strata to sea level. The route has an abundance of water and requires the least amount of excavating by making maximum use of natural waterways. These facts are confirmed by state geologist Dr. Robert O. Vernon. The canal is designed to cross the state at the most advantageous place geologically, elevation-wise and groundwater-wise. It will utilize a series of locks, and the barges will be lifted up by these locks in a series of steps, one located at Inglis, one at Dunellen, and will be floated across the summit area and lowered by a lock at Silver Springs at Eureka at St. John's into the St. John's River. We of the Division of Geology are convinced that our water resources can be controlled and managed uh, through the construction of the barge canal and uh, no damage will result to these resources. The essential purpose of the canal is low-cost transportation. Barge shipping costs are one-half to one-fourth the cost of other means. For example, a quart of oil could be shipped by barge from New Orleans through the Florida Canal to New Jersey more cheaply than a quart of milk can be delivered the length of Manhattan Island. Steel can be shipped for one-fourth the charges of the next cheapest means. Forest products can be moved more cheaply. This corn came from Chicago to Tampa for 29 cents per hundredweight. The next cheapest way of bringing this corn to Tampa cost over a dollar per hundredweight. Barging means that we no longer have to send Florida livestock to the grain belt for fattening. Rather, we can bring the grain here. These lower transportation rates eventually result in lower consumer costs. It's significant that the value of Florida mineral mining today is more than $200 million annually and has far greater potential. This portends a mining boom as mineral deposits are developed because of low-cost barge transportation. Lime rock that brings the producer only $1 a ton today for road construction should bring many times this amount when it can be cheaply hauled to plants for processing into lime, cement, whiting, paint filler, and other products. And we have four trillion tons of it. Dolomite near the canal in Levy and Citrus counties is plentiful and can be exploited in larger quantities for rock wool, glass, and fertilizer. There's a great potential in the soft rock and hard rock phosphate deposits. The nation's largest supply of zircon, strategic titanium ores, and the state's purest deposits of silica sand also lie near the root. Structural clay occurs in quantity along the scenic St. John's River. And Putnam County has large deposits of kaolinite used in paper manufacturing. Economical barge transportation is the key to this rich resource development. The ease of barge loading and unloading saves man hours. Barges cost less to build, less to operate than bulk cargo carriers. And waterways are cheaper to maintain than land routes. The canal is also a significant flood control asset. Florida has had serious problems in both the Withlacoochee and Ocklawaha River basins, problems created by bottlenecks at the mouths of those two streams. 
the canal eliminates these bottlenecks and reduces flood control costs. Florida's abundant rainfall provides its groundwater supply. The groundwater of South Florida is recharged south of the canal. Thus, the water flows outward in all directions from this recharge area, and therefore flows toward the canal route from the south, thereby having no appreciable effect on the recharge area. Much of the water management and flood control is already a reality, with the completion of Rodman Dam and three of the five locks which are planned for the canal. Rodman Reservoir is already filled to its engineered boundaries. The St. John's Lock is making it possible for bargemen and boatmen from the St. John's River and eastern waterways to explore this new water world. Inviting to all Florida citizens and visitors are the many campsites and lakefront facilities at the Rodman Recreational Area, the first of several to be developed. Boat launching is easy, and there's picnicking pavilions, plenty of water for boating, fishing, and swimming. Rustic campsites abound along the waterways and in the protected regions. Fishing seems to be pretty good below the Rodman Dam. The 32 square miles of water surface in these lakes, plus the protected upland areas, continue to improve as a refuge for fish and wildlife. During planning and engineering, environmental safeguards have been considered a most important aspect of the overall project. Ecologically speaking, University of West Florida professor and plant ecologist, Dr. Joe A. Edmiston, serving as consultant to Congress on environmental matters, has this to say. After a series of on-site inspections and careful study, I want to commend the Florida Canal Authority for the acquiring of a protective strip of land around the Cross Florida Barge Canal and for the underwriting of um, a planning of land use and land management around these areas by Dr. Ed Fernell of FSU. Such planning ahead for the conservation, tree farming, and recreational uses will also help slow down the eutrophication or natural aging of the bodies of water created behind these various locks and dams. The ultimate fate of uh, any such uh, body of water is to fill in or silt in. But the time interval and degree of our control over this has been vastly misrepresented. The normal aging of any body of water, such as this or any other trapped body, is over hundreds of years, and the lowering of the reservoir water levels periodically will delay this very slow aging process and definitely slowing eutrophication. Now, such lowering of these reservoirs has been recommended and will be implemented by the Corps of Engineers. It will help save the trees and will result in improved fishing and duck populations that will benefit these areas. The use of imported weed beetles to eat the alligator weed in these and other areas is an excellent example of biological control. As an ecologist, I believe the studies which have been made support the conclusion that the new reservoirs will provide a new set of habitats for wildlife and a variety of sport and commercial fish. We'll have more deer and more turkey populations in the upland areas. It's also very exciting to see how the marine situation has been improved off the Gulf Coast entrance to the canal. The sand dredged up from the canal was used to create a series of islands, not just a long series of spoil banks. And the, these islands are already becoming vegetated. And in addition to that, we're getting new shellfish populations on the rock exposed by such dredging. Dr. Edmiston's remarks show that conservation, in its truest sense, preserves the compatibility of man and nature. Now, through study and proper planning, progress and ecology coexist on the canal project. It is also important to note canal traffic is not restricted to barges alone. All types of commercial and pleasure boats, in fact, any craft drawing less than 12 feet of water, can travel this safe canal shortcut and go through any of the five locks without charge. This film has shown some of the important facts in the case for the canal. And once this important link is completed, 
the Cross Florida Barge Canal will become the key to connecting our country's principal waterways in 29 states. Florida's ports, Florida's existing industries, and Florida's citizens will all benefit. There will be new factories, new jobs, new homes, and many new recreational facilities. More and more of the nation's barge traffic will flow into and through this canal crossroad of Florida, making it truly the canal main street of barge commerce for the entire United States.